The Chicago Cubs have been red hot lately, and while they only have about a 4% chance of making it to the postseason, one player in particular has a lot to play for regardless. We're going to discuss Cody Bellinger and the Chicago Cubs' upcoming road trip against the Washington Nationals right after the intro. To the number one place for all Chicago baseball, let's start the show. All right, good morning, Chicago baseball fans. Welcome to another episode of Chicago Cubs Central. It's your boy, Big Broski. We in the building. Been able to do this more often. It feels good to see you guys. Appreciate all the love and comments. But hey, we're going to get right into it. Before the season started, me and my boy Mike King were on here just begging the Cubs to re-sign Cody Bellinger, especially after certain dominoes started to fall and didn't look like they were going to get anybody to replace him. Uh, they did sign him. They resigned him to, I think, an $80, $90 million three-year deal with two opt-out clauses. Unfortunately for my man Cody B, he got hurt a little bit. He didn't really start the season strong. He hasn't really been as good as he was last year. In case we forgot, last season, Cody Bellinger posted 307, 356, and 525 slashing line with 26 home runs and 97 RBIs. And honestly, if he didn't get hurt a little bit last season, it would have been a little bit better. and He would have had some type of MVP considerations. This season, though, he's at 239, 296, and 421 slashing line. And that's not good for somebody who's making $30 million. So basically for this since about June or July, we've all been kind of feeling like, well, he's going to be back next season. But the Chicago Cubs have had some sort of like resurgence over the last month or so. And if, even if they don't make the playoffs, if he plays well in the month of September, he could bet on himself and opt out of this contract. Now, if he does that, I'm pretty sure Jed Hoyer, who's looking to get younger and to have people under control on contract for longer periods of time, they're going to let go. They're not going to try to bring them back. And frankly, the Cubs can benefit a great deal by not bringing Cody Bellinger back. They'll have $27 million to use elsewhere on a couple of guys that's in AAA and you know maybe a couple of free agents or even swing for the fences and get a Pete Alonzo, which I know that's a lot of people's wet dream right now is looking at Alonzo from the middle uh, over here. But it's going to start with this month coming up, the month of September. Can Cody Bellinger have a consistent month? Kind of like Seiya Suzuki's having right now, Miguel Amaya is having, Pete Crow Armstrong is having, who's basically uh, Cody Bellinger's replacement at center field. Uh, he's been having a monster month. Uh, so can Cody Bellinger step it up and improve his slashing line and make himself kind of like tantalizing to other teams? If we not, if we haven't forgotten um, – Last uh, offseason, during the hot stove period, Cody Bellinger was one of the biggest names out there, and he didn't get signed until like January or February or something when the Cubs finally got the ink to paper. Uh, we know how Scott Boris likes to do business. He likes to play hardball, especially with the Cubs. And um, honestly, man, his inconsistency is going to be something to be paying attention to for the next 30 days. According to MLB's uh, Thomas Harrington, he, know, he said one of uh, – the several high-profile Scott Bears clients who remain, remained unsigned last offseason until spring training had already begun. Bellinger ended up returning to the Cubs on a three-year, $80 million deal that gives him the ability to opt out at the end of the 2024 season. But with the way he's performed this season, his opt-out decision can go either way. Man, it would be nice if he goes and takes care of business and gets himself into a position where he can leave the Chicago Cubs. At the end of the day, the Cubs are trying to get younger and better simultaneously. And they're not going to be able to do so with this man holding up the type of amount of money that he's holding up. We know Seiya Suzuki's not going to opt out of his contract. Uh, so it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take uh, Cody Bellinger to step up so he can bet on himself again. That's just the bottom line. I like the kid. He's only 28 years old. He still has a lot in the tank. But at the money that he's making and the up and down nature of his career where he'll be MVP caliber one year, average next year, MVP caliber the next, if he does opt in just based on the trend, he'll be MVP caliber again next year. So maybe that would be good for the Cubs. But I'm not banking on that. I'm thinking that we should keep investing in these young fellas. Uh, Pete Crow Armstrong is showing me enough 
to, to, to make me believe that he's the center fielder of the future and the leadoff hitter of the foreseeable future as well with that speed. Like this dude is Pepe or not Pepe, Speed Gonzalez uh, on the bags. So I'd rather put my heads, my bets on a peak pro Armstrong rather than an aging up and down off injured Cody Bellinger. Let me know down below what you guys uh, think about uh, Cody Bellinger. Should he return? Should he opt in? Uh, hopefully, do you think he can have a good enough September to convince himself and Scott Boris that he can opt out and go to another team or get the type of contract that he's looking for over the next four to five seasons? Or will he opt in and bet on himself again to have a good enough season to opt out next season with, with the Cubs? Y'all let me know. Uh, hit us up at 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com or the easiest way to do it is just leave a comment down below, um, of course, after you like the video. So Chicago Cubs are just having a, a great month. Uh, they're, they're trying to end the month on a high note, and they're going against the Washington Nationals. Now today, Shota Imanaga is taking the mound. Thank God Cal Hendricks isn't playing. Um, and listen, even though he's only, he got 10 wins, this man should have more wins than that. Uh, Shota Imanaga is 10-3 with a 3.08 ERA and 140 strikeouts on the season. Um, and the Cubs really, really need him to come out and take care of business today. His last seven um, uh, days, his ERA has been 2.57 um, with one win, uh, seven innings pitched in his last game pitched. Uh, and then he also has uh, four hits, giving up two, on, two runs, two home runs, two walks, and only three strikeouts in his last start versus the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, but on the season, we know what he's capable, capable of. It's sad to see this. He got 24 starts. He should have at least... 15, 16, 17 wins, to be honest. Uh, this dude has been knockout. He's been banana. He's been phenomenal. Uh, but the Cubs haven't been this offensive force that they've been over the last week or so when they've put up 70-plus runs. Like, amazing, amazing effort from the Cubs' uh, offense. And they're taking care of business, man. They're taking care of business. Uh, so I just want to see if Shota comes out today to take care of business for, versus these guys. They can get another win, which would, I believe, make it their – uh fifth fourth fourth straight win uh yeah it should be their fourth straight win uh, and get them on the way to winning uh their fifth straight series versus an opponent and get them closer to, to, to 500 on the road they they haven't really been that good on the road they're 32 and 37 on the road and the nationals they're not a, a team that you should just overlook even though they're only 61 and 73 on the season um these guys are six and four in their last 10 and their top eight uh, in batting average in the entire National League. So uh, they can't just overlook these guys and expect to go on the road and just get a win. So they got to keep riding high. They had to come back uh, in a major way, which is just something that I've watched re repeatedly, uh, the highlights of that game. It was incredible, incredible, especially with uh, with Betancourt, who claims that uh, he heard somebody when he um, in the, in behind him after he, has, has, uh, he swung at a bad pitch. Somebody behind him in the crowd heckled him and said that he stinks and he rebounded by getting uh, the, the the game uh, tying. No, it wasn't the game tying. Gave the Cubs the lead with one swing of the bat, and uh, the Cubs didn't look back after that. So shout out to Betancourt for using uh, motivation uh, by, from the crowd. And they're going to have to use motivation again tonight uh, on the road in a hostile environment, a team that's trying to play spoiler, even though the Cubs only have about a 4% chance of making it to the playoffs because the, the doggone Mets – are still in front of them. Uh, the Atlanta Braves are still in front of them. The Padres and Diamondbacks are also still in front of them. But the Diamond, I mean, the Padres are on a two-game losing streak. So the more they lose, the bigger, the better chance that the Cubs have. And Atlanta's playing against a very good Phillies team uh, this weekend. So there's a chance that they could lose a couple of more games and put the Cubs in position to move up in the wild card standings. As it stands right now, the Cubs are five games out of the final wild card spot sitting at 68 and 66 two games above 500 with their current two three game winning streak they got to push it to four five and six this weekend to make sure that they have a chance to make the playoffs going into the month of september so real quick um this is a website that i like to use um called uh pickdogs.com and they're predicting what's going to happen with the cubs and the nationals today uh 
it's pretty dope. Pickdogs.com, D A W G S. I mean, G Z. Pick, pick, D A W G Z.com. They go really, really deep into the uh, behind the scenes numbers. Uh, and the Cubs versus the Nationals, this is the first time that they'll play each other this year. But like little things like uh, uh, Shota Imanaga has allowed two earned runs or fewer in three of his last four starts. Uh, Jake Irving, who's the starting pitcher for the Washington Nationals, um, he's nine and ten with a three point eight zero ERA this season uh, in, in, in one hundred and fifty six innings pitched this year. He's allowed two earned runs in two of his last three starts. So again, the Cubs cannot overlook these guys tonight. They're looking to get this win. They do not care what the Cubs are playing for. Now the Cubs have won eight of their not their last nine road games against teams that have losing records. So that bodes well for them. The Nationals have lost seven of their last eight night games against National League opponents. So that bodes well for the Cubs. And then the Cubs have covered the run line in each of their last four night games against National League opponents. And finally, the Nationals have failed to cover the run line in seven of their last nine games against the Cubs following a win. So the Cubs have a lot of reasons to get this victory tonight, but they cannot over look these guys now t- total run facts according to uh to these guys on pickdogs.com each of the last net nat- each of the nationals last night six night games against national league opponents have gone under the total runs line six of the last the cubs last seven road games against the national league opponents have gone over the total run line and we know it's gone over these guys have been putting up major numbers um the inning one over point. I don't know what this stuff means, so I'll let you guys deal with that. The player props and all of that. Um, if you if you gamble, the Cubs are definitely take the over tonight. The way the Cubs have been playing, just take the over. That's as far as I could go with gambling because I'm not a gambler. But the Cubs come into this series playing very well over the last couple of weeks, and they're on the outside looking into this wild card race. But they got to stay hot, and who they're depending on to stay hot. Our players like Ian Happ, Shota Imanaga, uh, Seiya Suzuki, P. Crow Armstrong, Miguel Amaya, if he's if he's catching tonight. Uh, but mainly, uh, not mainly, but hopefully Cody Bellinger as well. Join the party, Cody Bellinger. Make some hay for yourself. Create an opportunity for yourself to opt out of this contract and bet on yourself again on another team next year. Or maybe get an ex- a, a extended contract in the mid-20s you know, mid to low twenties or low to mid twenties, 22, $23 million a year over the next five years, as opposed to having to keep doing this 27 million a year over the next two season and handicapping the Cubs uh, with your contract. So go out there, Cody Bellinger, prove that you deserve what you think that you're, you're worth my guy. All right. Y'all already know what it is. Uh, Appreciate y'all for rocking with me this week, getting more into the consistency of it. It feels good to do this on a daily basis. Um, Hey, don't forget to like, share, comment. Don't forget to follow the rest of the Chi-Town Sports family from Chicago Bears, Bull Sky, Blackhawks Central, uh, and then, of course, uh, the NBA Central channel, uh, then, the, then the, the Cognac Boys with C-Dub and Bobby as well. Chicago Sky game tonight. C-Dub will be live calling, I believe. If not, it should be Steve-O and myself uh, checking out the Chicago Sky versus Caitlin Clark and the Indy Einer Fever. All right, go ahead and hit us up at 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com for any questions, comments, and or concerns. And y'all already know what it is. We're going to holler at y'all next time. Appreciate the love and support. Peace. To the number one place for all Chicago.